Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Molly Hedy Carroll, and you are watching day two of Bring Your Own Hero, a three day comic masterclass with comic artist, storyboard artist, and educator Klaus Sherwinski. Welcome back, Klaus. That is me. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. It's a really beautiful day. And of course, I must say hello to everybody who's uh, tuning in live all over the world and everybody who's in our chat. Hello, Gareth Williams. Hello, Andreas Holler. Hello, Conan Samuel Eric Yao. Hello, awesome. Sandrina. I remember you from yesterday. You asked a lot of questions. That's great. And uh, of course, if anybody would like to participate in the chat and maybe ask Klaus questions during the stream, you can head over to behance.net slash Adobe Live and join the fun there. So Klaus, yesterday was really great. You covered so much ground about comics and comic fundamentals. So what are you going to talk about today? Uh, today, I'm trying to actually talk less. I'm going to try to draw more um, because uh, drawing drawing comics is a, a great joy and it's also very entertaining to watch for people. So, um, but uh, we, we touched upon a couple of great, great points yesterday. So let's go into a little recap and just dive into drawing uh, or in, into Photoshop right now. All right. Um, if we can Get switch to that. that. Um, so we, yesterday we looked at two pages from uh, a G.I. Joe comic book that I drew. And if you missed the masterclass, you can still go back and see it. It's still uh, on Behance and YouTube. Um, indeed, you can only uh, comment when you're on Behance, right, Molly? But indeed, yes. So yeah, come over to Behance.net and, uh, and join the fun there and ask me questions. Um, uh, today I will I will draw a page for you, an entire page, and that page is going to be based on a little sample script that I wrote, I concocted. It's really short, it's really tiny, really compact, and really simple. It's still super hard to draw that page within right basically one hour that I have with you guys, um, uh, just for the drawing part. Um, so yesterday we talked about how this comic book page was created really from, from the script um, to the thumbnails and then actually to a final comic book with lettering. Um, and we, we juxtaposed, we put next to each other these two pages here and compared them a little bit and saw how panel sizes vary. And we're going to talk about panel sizes and, um, and, uh, and why panels are hard to compose for comic books. I'm going to talk about this in a second. And, and then I did a, um, a little drawing of uh, a superhero, a superhero, which is indeed Superman, uh, the icon uh, himself. So I did this composition. So check, check out our last chat talking about um, overlapping elements. And sometimes they overlap with the panel, and that's called border breaking. Uh, so if you do border breaking, the element that's most in the front, closest to camera, that has to border break. Things in the background can't. So there are a couple of rules always when I speak, when I teach. Um, I know we are artists, so we can do everything on the blank page. Yes, you can if you're an artist. If you're a commercial illustrator, if you're a comics artist, you serve the story. And the story needs to be communicated in a very, very simple way. It's hard work to make it look simple. So there's a dichotomy for you right there. And drawing comic books is super hard. You have to be the writer, you're the actor, you're the director, you're the set dresser, you're the lighting artist, you're the colorist, you're the VFX, special effects person. You have to cover, you have to wear all those hats and you have to cover, cover all those disciplines. And that's not simple. And when I draw for you today, we will see how hard it is, even for a seasoned professional such as myself, it's still hard, it's still tricky, and it still takes an hour plus just to draw a sketch, not the final one, just the breakdown, just a sketch of the story. So let's see how far I actually get or if I'm going to fail and have a hard time. Yeah, um, an hour is really short, like really short. So yeah, if you manage to pull it off, that's going to be very impressive. Yes. Um, so I made a I made a script for for you people out there, and we're going to talk about the ingredients of this script in a second. And you will be able to comment live uh, in the chat and let us know what's your favorite hero, for example. Um, and uh, we'll go through this in a second. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here so we can read it together. Um, yeah, today it's very it's even more important that people join the chat because there's going to be audience participation. So everybody, go to behance.net slash Adobe Live. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I always prepare too much material for my master classes. 
Um, and I always am happy to drop something that I promised I wanted to do. Uh, and I'm happy to drop it in order to answer questions from the chat, because that is the most important thing for me to uh, to actually answer the questions and the, the struggles and help with the struggles that people really have instead of just making up something like, oh, this is something a lot of people struggle with. Maybe it's something I struggled with and I overcame, but it doesn't mean that you struggle with it as an artist. And as an artist, we're all struggling. Indeed. So here's the sample script. Uh, it's very simple. It does not contain any dialogue. Make, adding dialogue to it makes it more complicated. And I'm gonna show you a sample of that in one second. Uh, it's another sample from the G.I. Joe comic. But this one uh, just has six panels, so it's very averagey for comic uh, for comic books, for American style comic books. Panel one is an establishing shot of the location A. So you can come up with a location that might be interesting. It could be anything. It could be a warehouse, it could be a castle. I, I don't care. It could be a, uh, a shop or whatever. Um, come up with something that's interesting where two characters can fight in. And then panel two, we have a hero, and the hero arrives, or the heroine, uh, male, female, doesn't matter what what gender or whatever that person is, arrives in the center of that location. And arrives hopefully means something cool. I mean, like, I love flying superheroes and all that and jumping superheroes. Um, uh, but it, it might be something else. Um, but yeah, it arrives, uh, the hero arrives there. Panel three, the hero finds a location deserted. So I'm going to draw something that has to do with the location, has to do with the hero and shows that there's nobody there. So that's gonna be an interesting panel for me to draw. Um, panel four, a hero almost uh, turns around too late. Uh, I have a spelling mistake there, I see. Ah, too late with two O's, right? I'm not a writer, obviously. Um, so the hero almost turns around too late to see. So turns around and then sees panel five, the antagonist, C. So you can give us, under C, you can give us an antagonist, an anti-hero, and an opponent. And the opponent is attacking the hero in this way. So maybe the opponent has a superpower or the opponent throws something. And what is that object they throw? We don't know. You make it up. I'll try to draw it. And then panel six, the hero reacts by using their ability E. Maybe they have a super ability. Maybe the super ability is just running really away really fast. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, the hero reacts and evades or counteracts that thing. We don't know. Um, often these scripts are written in a similar way. They're held very simple because um, comic book writers care a lot about dialogue and about story arcs and emotional beats and motivations. And um, at the same time, they want to give us, the, the artist, and I'm a collaborator with the writer, they want to give, give us a lot of freedom. So they leave out a lot of information that we have to make up on the fly. But that's the fun part, actually. I'm very thankful for that because I don't want to draw scripts that say uh, we have a shot of the hero. It's a low angle shot. He's coming in from the left. In the top right, we see the, the top of a pine tree and a clock that says like three o'clock. And we're going to have in the background these and that buildings and no, that that's too much information. That's no longer fun. I'm just executing. Then you know, I'm not. I'm not an AI. I, I don't follow the orders. But also, I bring in my own imagination. I'm not a robot that does that. And we want to have fun drawing comics, and that's what it's all about. I think. For sure, and also because I've written comics, it can also happen where you're writing, and then it's like, and then he pay, like harking back to the phantom comic yesterday could be and he picks up the table and it's like where did the table come from <laughs> that can happen too when you're writing you don't think of it visually while when you're drawing you have to that's another thing that can happen in the writing phase where the artist has to give input yes yeah and if you have a, a a thing like this now that you mentioned this uh, for example um Yesterday, I was like talking about the IV tubes that are being pulled taut here. They are really key storytelling element in, in this one there. And um, actually, the writer put it in there. I checked the script. It's, it was uh, a while ago since, I, since I've drawn this. And yeah, the writer actually is, uh, I mentioned that he's really good, JT Krull. Uh, he put that in there. It was a critical element to this story because it really tells the story of him getting up. And it has nothing to do basically with me drawing him getting out of the picture or how I draw the anatomy or the drapery in this thing. But it has to do a thing, has to do with me actually establishing this IV tubes in his left, in his right arm um, already in the picture before. And it's even visible down here in the other panel. So um, this continuity is really crucial when, when, making, uh, when making comics. 
okay, the people in the chat are probably already buzzing and thinking about like, okay, what location, what hero should I give there? There are actually already hero? some location uh, suggestions actually, yeah. Very good. I'll, I'll take like two more minutes or so or five uh, and talk about uh, work balloons and work balloon placement for one second. And then we're going to dive right into the sample script. I'm so excited to get started. Me too. You know, it's to see quite what you a do. challenge for me. <laughs> so I have a page here and it's another page. It's page five actually from the same G.I. Joe comic book. Um, and we can see it's pretty empty, right? There's, uh, there's not a lot going on here. Klaus was like, uh, super, super lame here. He uh, actually showed us this and there's like a lot of empty space. There's empty space here, there's empty space here. My goodness, Klaus, what did you do? This is one of the, the panels that are, um, are free and open, don't have a border. We talked about it yesterday. Somebody asked about that in the chat. So ab absolutely, yes, I'm using those. I'm using those techniques uh, of comic books. I also have like panels that I have a, have a nice full border. And then I have some panels that actually end into the bleed of the comic book. We talked about the proportions and the cutoff lines yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, you should all check that out. Uh, the the um, the, um, the master class from yesterday, but this one here has a lot of open space. So what what is happening there? What's happening in there is dialogue. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of word balloons in this one, and the word balloons are one of the key factors that have an impact on what size panels are on the page. Because what I mentioned yesterday, we always pressed for space. Basically, we can see this here that the um, um, that the dialogue is actually taking turns. They're taking turns talking. So we have, I don't know what Photoshop is doing now, um, but they take turns talking. So uh, the guy talks first, then the doctor speaks, then he speaks again, then the doctor speaks. So this is like one, two, three, four. And this makes sense um, because it's, it's, it has a certain proximity in there. Uh, and we're using these little connectors in order to, to, to give more distance because we read things in the order as they appear in space on the page. So if this work balloon is closer to work balloon number one, then we're gonna read this one first. This one is separated by space. So this is actually closer than this one. And, and that is the rule. It's a rule of approximation. And whenever there are other elements like the face um, in there, we will also look at the face. So face, hands, and work balloons are really interesting. So same thing is happening down here. One, and then two, he speaks, and three, he speaks again, and then four. And we're actually not going to do a little pointer here. The, the lettering artist actually did this one. So that's a smart way of doing this. And let me see what's in my breakdowns. Oh, looky there. In my breakdowns, you can see the word balloons arranged in a specific way so we know what's going on here. So he goes like, mm, coming up, it's like, oh, you're waking up. And we can compare this with the final one and we see the word balloon was again changed. I thought the word balloon would be here and the lettering artist placed it there. What does that mean? That means because time in storyboarding and in film is space in comic books, things happen in a sequence. That's why it's called sequential art. Um, and there was a guy who wrote a book about it, comics and sequential art by, um, by Will Eisner, if I remember correctly, right? Oh, I have a copy of that actually right here. You have a copy right there. Oh my God, this is almost as if we planned for it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good book. Little book recommendation here. That's fantastic. Uh, everybody buy this book. It, it goes into the theory. It gives you a lot of drawings. Will Eisner, there's an award named after him in, in, in America. And yeah, you should really... Um, you should really check out this book. You know it means business. I have a question about the the bubbles because yeah. your sketch, the the bubbles that you kind of blocked in uh, as placeholder, are pretty much the size of the bubbles. Eventually, how do you know how much space to leave for the text? Is it just feeling? Is there a technique for that? Uh, there are two techniques. This here is called um, eyeballing it, <laughs> right? Uh, the other technique is you actually take lettering in Photoshop and squeeze it in there in the exact size, go to like size nine or size eight, whatever it is, and actually take a letter, a professional lettering comic front 
like from Comic Craft, for example. Um, I love the Cutthroat font. It's a really an amazing font. I used it on, on Rise, Son of Rome on a comic book uh, special uh, that we did for a video game back in the day in, 20, uh, in yeah, 2013. Um, but yeah, uh, today I often put in the text myself to really see how much space does it take because sometimes it's really tricky to, to squeeze it in. Here, I was just eyeballing it. Big, medium, small size, word balloons. You can just eyeball it. The good thing is always leave enough room. Always err on the side of caution when placing in word balloons. Rather give the lettering artist a little bit more space than forcing the lettering artist to actually cut off a head or something like that. And we, we don't want that. Um, but I was just talking about what's happening here in the, in the sequencing. And it's that basically this, this moving this word balloon from here to this location, to the second location where it actually is, means I thought he's like, mm, and then he goes, comes up. And now it's like, he comes up and says, mm. so there's a little bit, uh, uh, an order of, uh, of of that sequence has been changed a little bit by that. And that's perfectly fine. And again, as I said yesterday, everybody, including the lettering artist, is part of the storytelling chain and they help make the product read better. And this is damn fine lettering, if I may say so. For sure. There's a lot packed in there. It's so funny, the difference between the one where it's kind of empty and then when you put the text in, it's actually quite a busy page. Yes, right? Uh, so I left I left a lot of space uh, here in order to 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 make that happen, and I, I made a decision to put uh, the GI Joe character more on the right here, so the left opens up to put a work balloon, and and that was actually the idea I had. You can even see how I how how I made the work balloon here like go behind the ear and actually bracket it into like two little sentences because he has a lot of dialogue there. Oh yeah. He says, like, I, I don't know anything. I can't even remember my name. That is two sentences. Those can be broken up actually in two or one and a half word balloons where they're like uh, blocked together, like blobbing basically together. Um, but yeah, uh, at some other masterclass, I will go more into word balloons and we can talk about that stuff. Uh, it's a science on its own and it's a wonderful field. And maybe Adobe should get a lettering artist online at some point who's doing it in, in Illustrator. And Adobe Illustrator is the program of choice to, to letter comic books. So that would be really interesting to see that process as well and to find out some tips and tricks how to do it faster. That's I would love idea. to watch. I would I'd love tune to watch into that, that too. Yeah. So I think, um, I think we're probably going to move to your sample script relatively soon. So I'm just going to urge the audience, if you can already start suggesting, some of you have suggested locations, but if the rest of you could suggest some locations, uh, I think we'll probably get started on that quite soon. Yes, we will. So, so let's dig into this. I'm just going to wrap up this page here really quick. So it's something I, uh, when I looked at this, I was looking through this and I saw these characters interacting. This is the sketch for it, right? The pencil sketch I did before. And I noticed how important the hands are. Um, there's not a lot of background in here and we see very little of the characters. You can see like, we never see the legs of the characters. It's just basically upper bodies, face close-ups, and all that stuff. I could have done a shot where they're like fully visible in bed, but it would have given me a lot of dead space. And I always want to go as close as possible and as far away as necessary to maximize the faces because that's where the emotion is. That's where uh, it really happens. And uh, the second thing I mentioned is work balloons and hands. So let's check this out. Oopsie. Let's check this out here. So this is the page with the hands. And now I've taken out a couple hands. Hmm. So this is the page of an artist that doesn't like drawing hands. Oh, hands are difficult. I don't want to learn how to draw them more. It's, it's too much work. Uh, I, left, I left a couple hands in there because they have to be in there and photoshopping them out was too difficult. So I just sketched over it, but you can see how much emotion is lost, how dead they are all of a sudden, right? This is a person just sitting there staring down. This is a doctor just, just not participating with him. Uh, the, he's getting up, but he's not really actively getting up. There's no hands there. So the moment I have even a half a hand or a quarter hand, um, that's, that makes it much more interesting. Or check out this little tidbit here, how he's like putting away his book. He was reading a book and he's putting away his book. Um, so that makes that thing interesting already. Um, so always draw in as much hands as possible. 
Uh, you can see it in the last panel too down here or this panel. I mean, it's so easy to just ignore this hand or when the, the doctor here is turning around to, to take out the clothes that he found of the soldier. Um, yeah, he turns around, but and then all of a sudden he has the thing, but how did he grab it, right? He grabs it because he, he was thinking and then he was turning around to grab the thing and drawing in the hands will connect the action much nicer. But I think we should get started on, uh, I should get my hands on another page and get started with that, uh, with that yes. sample script. So I've got a couple of location suggestions um, in the chat, a, oh. a sinking container ship, an abandoned destroyed spaceship, a graveyard. Let me see, graveyard. scrolling up, let's see. Oh my God, graveyard is amazing. I'd love to do a graveyard. Somewhere with somewhere with water, so that can be called back to later uh, for when they defeat the the enemy. A car park. What do you think? I think graveyard seems to make you the most excited. Graveyard is like so cool. I mean, that's that's a great location for a fight. There's stuff you can throw there. There's there's shapes you can use that are very simple. Sure, car park is like absolute hell to draw because you need to draw cars a lot. It's um, if you had said like a stable with a lot of horses standing around, that would also be very difficult to draw. And I'll suggest uh, something, a field, an empty field with some grass. Wonderful, <laughs> I can do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, like we need those backgrounds to actually give us the idea of where they are. And it's drawing in backgrounds will always enhance the performance of your characters. Because I said, you're also the actor. Uh, when you're drawing and you have to think a little bit like like an actor, uh, you're not an actor, but you have to think like one. Um, and you have to, to to coach your character that you do and and coerce them to do certain things and look dynamic and look extreme and looks look heroic. But what what hero is good uh, for for the crew? Yes, please suggest heroes. And while people are suggesting their heroes, there's actually a question from uh, Michelle, which is that uh, John Rochelle was featured on Adobe Live a few years ago, and he did a stream on lettering and Illustrator for comic books. He also has a LinkedIn learning course. Klaus, do you have any online courses? I personally don't have any online course, courses. Uh, I don't have the time to prepare one. I should do that at some point. I should also write a little book because I, I think I know a couple things and I can inspire people to pick up the pencil and, and tell a story with pictures. I uh, didn't get around to it yet, but fantastic. J.G. Rochelle, uh, John Rochel is, um, is amazing. And he actually works with Richard Starkings with Comic Craft. He's a Comic Craft person, so... Yeah, the book I recommended yesterday, he had a hand in that as well, I think. Oh. So fantastic. The world of comic books is small. Yeah, that's crazy. So guys, we need your hero suggestions. My my favorite heroes don't work. I really like things like Plastic Man and uh, like Man Ping and stuff like that. But uh, mm. I don't know. Let's see if it's a graveyard. I guess Batman makes sense or maybe Nightwing. Oh, Nightwing is cool. He's jumping around a lot, throwing stuff. He's a DC hero. He's easy to draw. So I also, I need something that's relatively easy to draw. Um, so so um, if you come with something like super duper crazy, like I will just spend 20 minutes drawing this one character on the page and I will not get to a second panel. Well, so Nathan, Nathan suggested the graveyard so that the, um, uh, the character could be mourning. So maybe he's visiting his parents' grave or something like that. And then somebody ambushes him. That that is definitely interesting. Yeah, um, I mean it's it's not necessarily in the script, but that's something we we can bring in there and to 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 make it more interesting. And this is something where I like, as a as if, if I got this script as a storyboard artist, I would ask all those questions. This is this is too too simple. Uh, it's not only a sample script; it's a simple script. Uh, it's a simplified script. Um, so uh, a real uh, author, a real writer for comic books would have more information in there. They would say like, okay, hero. B is coming back to see his parents' grave or something like that. So we would got all that content. All that is important. The writer would put it in there. And then we would embellish and expand on that. Um, so we can see. I like your Nightwing suggestion, though. The um, other suggestions I see are a heroic squirrel, a garbage man, <laughs> a grave digger, and Spider-Man. Spider-Man is indeed fantastic. I mean, Spider-Man is like Nightwing, right? But I like Spider-Man more than Nightwing, so I would immediately gravitate towards Spider-Man. That's that's super good. 
Um, uh, oh, yeah, right. uh, a squirrel is funny because like, I, I want to draw a sample script for American style comic books. So uh, let, let's, let's keep it American style and maybe use, maybe use Spider-Man um, because he can shoot webbing and he has a lot of different abilities, right? So let's go with Spider-Man, very simple very much in my in my ballpark so thank you very much for the suggestion all right and next up we need an antagonist and we need a way that they're um attacking the hero yeah so an antagonist an opponent uh, they are going to fight and they are attacking the hero in in this way and while we do this i will start i'll start drawing up a grid right so the grid i'm drawing up is the most simple grid i could ever imagine and it's basically this six uh, six panel structure um, simplified here without a gutter actually. So for thumbnails, that's okay for me because I don't make have to make it look pretty. At the end, I hope I have the time. I'll just create the gutters really fast in Photoshop. Click, 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 and we'll we'll do the thing. So let's see about this. I can also actually trim this blue line page in now because we want to draw out to the uh, to the bleed line. Uh, so I will adjust the um, so give me a moment. I will just the size of that because we don't actually need to see this. So we need to go here. Actually, let me see. That is, I think, this. And then we go here and go there. And then I just have to draw uh, until the edge of the page. Boom. Here we go. So this is my this is my trim line. The dotted line is the trim line, or down there is the trim line. And um, and this is going to be my comic book page that I have. So now I have to make a decision. What panel is my money shot? Which panel is the big panel? And a lot of factors can come in there. I will go into this more maybe maybe tomorrow on another masterclass. So there are a lot of factors in that. Word balloons and text captions is one of the factors. Another factor is like how complex is the action? If it's Spider-Man, he's jumping around like crazy and we draw him like six times because he's so fast. That is a complex action to perceive and to see, and we need a lot of room to do this. But it also might be the importance of the moment. Maybe Spider-Man is really shocked to turn around and, and see this here like, oh my God, you're alive? So the shock moment might be really important. There's not much happening on, it's just Spider-Man's face basically, it's all I need. I can go in as close as possible as far away as necessary. So I don't have to draw a bazillion background elements in that in that shot, in that panel, but it's really important and I can make it bigger just because it's important. Um, so there are a lot of factors going into this and I'll, I will see how this goes. There's another thing and our, our people already, I uh, don't want to interrupt myself, but are people already like giving us an antagonist, like an anti-hero, an opponent? There's a couple, uh, there's a couple of suggestions, uh, a necromancer that maybe raises the dead. Ooh, wow, cool. <laughs> um, making the grave digger into, an, into a villain, uh, a gangster, uh, undead Uncle Ben, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> a psychological horror there, wow, for Spider-Man. Yeah, my one of my favorite villains is Mysterio, and he might fit because it's Spider-Man and it's a graveyard baby, not sure, an, an owl-based villain. An owl-based villain. Okay, but how is he attacking? Oh, they are attacking. Yes, this is also important. We need to know what they're what they're doing to attack Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, I can come up with something. I mean, like we had a graveyard, right? So maybe somebody's throwing a, a gravestone, you know? That's fine for me. I think that's good. Oh yeah, it could be Solomon Grundy or something mixing up the mixing up the universes. Yeah, so yeah, we can totally mix up the universe for sure. So um somebody said like a necromancer. Um uh, that's cool, but um, uh, I mean, like we could do any type of sorcerer, for example. Um, so if I think necromancer, I'm thinking of an evil sorcerer, like the, with a pointy beard and, and a cape, like Doctor Strange type material, right? Mysterio is kind of cool like this as well. But if he would throw a gravestone, Mysterio's gravestone that he throws would be like an, an illusion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really hard to find fight for Spider-Man in that sense. So I want to draw something oof, with a lot of punch. So let's see where we go there. I need all this information, by the way, before I can start the page. So this is really important. Uh, everybody give me please an antagonist that's strong, that can throw something maybe. Um, and and uh, and then, well, the hero reacts with their ability Spider-Man. So maybe 
we have a choice there of like Spider-Man's webbing something or he's evading really fast. That could be that could be really cool. Or Spider-Man is actually, you know, destroying with a superpower. He's destroying the graveyard thrown at him. It's just concrete. Spider-Man is super powerful. So he could do that too. It's your choice. I'm going to draw it. Um, Nathan is suggesting a lich that raises skeletons and that's what attacks Spider-Man. And Sandrina is suggesting maybe a vampire attacking him. Maybe Dracula is attacking Spider-Man. Oh, a vampire. That is, I think that's really interesting. That's cool. Uh, let, let's go with a vampire character, right? I'm just going to wrote vampire here. And that could be indeed Morbius, the living vampire, who's a really cool character in the comic books. Perfect. Um, and he's attacking the hero in this way. Maybe he throws the graveyard. Like I think he could do this. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and and maybe maybe you have an idea later on down the road. He throws something. Okay. Yes. Uh, maybe the, the the chat still has an idea in like five or ten minutes because I need to start drawing. I only have one hour left, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Better get going then. So yeah, guys, you need to think about um, how is the vampire attacking? He's throwing something at Spider-Man, and then Spider-Man reacts by using which power? So we need we need uh, something that Dra that Dracula's throwing and something that Spider-Man's doing to counter. Exactly. Um, so let me explain one more thing, and it's something I call the natural panel form. Uh, if you have not heard about this concept, uh, that's because nobody is using it. Um, I, I'm just. I like to talk about this because drawing comics is hard. And whenever we start drawing as an artist and we somebody gives us a prompt and says like, okay, please draw, for example, draw a human, right? So I'm drawing a human that's just, just standing, just any human, just drawing the shape of a human. Here's a human for you. Cool. The natural panel form of that human, like naturally I would draw him like this. And most people would be like that, right? So the natural panel form is actually... Uh, a rectangle it's not a box not round it's a rectangle as comic panels mostly are and this is a vertical one so what if i if i hear car or what if i hear um let's say hospital bed right and if you hear hospital bed right like this is how we would we talked about it yesterday this is what we would draw this is a hospital bed um, with the ground underneath it from the side because it's very easy to identify it this way and there's a there's a person lying in in, in the hospital bed maybe um, so that's that's good. So the natural panel form of that is, excuse me, is this. So this is very natural. But when we when we composite a page and and put more pictures next to each other, right? Like uh, Scott McLeod says, juxtapose pictorial and other images in a deliberate sequence. If we do this, um, sometimes. It doesn't work out for us. And sometimes we might have to go ahead and do a comic book panel where um, the upright standing human and we, we might need a, a panel like this. And the person lying in a hospital bed is in completely different panel shapes, different panel forms. So it doesn't follow the natural panel form that we would assume and that we are used to drawing in. So comic book artists have to be able to draw anything from any angle at any time. And keep in mind that there also were balloons that go in there at some point. Uh, so keep some, some, some room for that. So how would we do this? How would, we, how would I do a, uh, a shot of a human you know, like, like if I was like 10 years old, for example, back back in the day, I would just draw this. Right? And he's, he's my character standing around like this. So there's a lot of dead space that I don't know how to fill, maybe, because the action is about a character uh, walking into, into a hospital, for example. And um, yeah, so I can draw like a hospital thing here or a hospital bed or whatever it is. I can draw this, but it's, it's relatively boring and I want to make it exciting and I want to go as close and as possible, as far away as necessary. So what I will do is I'll do like an extreme Dutch angle. The diagonal is the longest form, the longest line in this rectangle, right? It's, it's not the height of it. It's, 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 it's actually this line. So what I'm going to do is very simple. Uh, let me see if I have this on another layer. I do have it on another layer. I will actually, I can do R actually and rotate this thing a little bit to make it easier for me to, to draw. Whoops, see, something happened. Very good. So I'm going to do it like this and I'm going to draw in the character. I'm going to draw the character from below. So all of a sudden I have to be able to draw characters that are walking um, 
and that are existing and I have to do it in a low angle shot. So all my lines converge converge upright and it's it's going to look very dramatic and it's going to look very cool. We have an arm going out the thing here, out the panel. We have the hips here and then we have the legs and I have a lot of the leg here and uh, I might have another leg going, let's say here. So he has a hand here. Um, I'm open this hand up. So it looks looks relaxed, and the character is is walking is walking forward. He has his ear down here, just adding a little bit of anatomy um, to make it read better. And then we have lines up here. And then if actually if it's a hospital, for example, we would could put in a, a sign here. We could put in the edge, the frame of a door, if we can draw prospectively, we can draw a door frame here with the framing all around. And we could put a line here because they're often lines like, oh, the yellow line, follow the yellow line to get to the emergency room or something like that. We can also uh, put in other stuff. And here we can actually say like um, 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 ER room this way, right? And make it make an arrow there. And then we have a, we have an interesting panel and I'm going to hit R here. Take it back. And now I see, oopsie, that went too far, Klaus. So I'm looking at this now. And I'm like, oh, you know what? This is actually a little bit too dramatic. So I might want to change this just, just a little bit and just tilt it. And it's so easy in Photoshop indeed to do this. If you have to, if you have drawn this, you have to do this again. So how much do I actually need? Maybe I just need this. Maybe this is actually good. So maybe this character is also about also talking about stuff. And we now see how room opens up in this illustration. It still works, but I was like, oh my God, I've had it with these people. I have to do something. So I'm, I'm anchoring the, the word balloon up here and he's talking about something and maybe somebody else is calling him from another direction. So this is now getting interesting. We have the full human, we have him walking, but it's a different panel shape. Superb. We've got a couple of suggestions for the climax of our cool page we're gonna make. Uh, some suggestions include a um, couple from uh, Nathan Dennis and Anton. Um, oh, and one from uh, Sundrina at the, at the last second there. Oh, and from Dennis. Here we go. Great, great, great. So um, the vampire uses echolocation to avoid Spider-Man's attacks. Then Spider-Man uses himself as a decoy. Uh, the vampire can fly. He flies to the spire and removes the cross and uh, attacks uh, Spider-Man with the Iron Cross. Uh, the vampire glides down to Spider-Man who apologizes to the person he's mourning while yeeting the gravestone at the vampire. Um, bat using uh, bats to attack Spider-Man, then uh, Spider-Man escapes by uh, using spider webs in a tree and then attacks Spider-Man from behind. Um, tombstone boomerangs appear from nowhere and Spider-Man swings them back. Uh, the vampire drops an entire church steeple onto Spider-Man and it gets caught with the web. And uh, I like this one that uh, Dracula has a big tombstone hammer that he smashes Spider-Man with. <laughs> a tombstone hammer, that, that's great. So so what you, what you described there was a trailer, like a trailer for a video game or, or a movie. You did not describe one panel. I needed a description for one image. Um, so this is always uh, this is this is tricky, right? Like the writer actually has to anticipate how much story you can tell in one panel in order to make the entire thing work, and they have to have a great feel how much dialogue and how much action can you do on a page, and how much do you want to do on a page because the page flip also determines determines the uh, the excitement and uh, when you turn a page you go to a new location or something is revealed when you turn the page so you have to be aware of where you are in the story are you on an even page on an odd page are you on the starting page and so forth uh, I love the idea though the vampire attacks with bats so he's sending bats into spider-man's direction um, so uh, I love it right let's do the bats there you could, uh, you, could inter you could interpret uh, Anton's suggestion that maybe Spider-Man counters by catching them in a web, and then that's the conclusion. Perfect. Let's do this. Let's let's do this. Uh, and uh, uses their ability, and that's the ability of uh, web webs, right? So that's that's great. Um, that's now we have our story. Oh my god, we have our story. Did um, it, guys? Hooray! Teamwork. 
This is really cool. Um, so natural panel form indeed with the with the bed, just to just to to finish that point. If we have to do the bed, right, we don't have to show the entire bed, which is also a concept that beginning artists always have. Things like, oh, I have to show the entire thing, or I have to to know the entire thing. We artists want to draw, we, we need to know all the details. It's really important that we know how this hospital bed is made up, like it's got wheels on it so you can move it and all that stuff, right? So to actually sell the idea of it. And then we actually are we're forced by something like this, by the storytelling to make a selection and to go like, okay, we need this uh, or we need that. We can show this and we can show that. So this, for example, would be an interesting way to communicate the hospital bed, we can actually show the wheels here and a, a, another uh, railing. We can show the, the ground here, for example, we can show something in the background. And then we have a character lying lying in bed under a blanket in the bed. And then this again, oh wonder, opens up room for space balloons. But uh, be aware where you put this, right? Like this is a work balloon. You look at the head first, you go from this panel, like, oh, I'm, I'm suffering, right? This actually this could be two panels together so this character goes like oh i'm 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 suffering right this might actually go this direction like uh and he'd be like help me um and then uh maybe we have the other character coming into view here so we're already with the shadow on it right he comes into view and maybe he says something from off screen while he's here oh really suffering like i'm not well why are you visiting me only now i've been here three days um yeah, a lot of storytelling can ha ha happen naturally like this, but now I should jump into, into our story and make stuff up for you. Yay. Okay, uh, let me see. I'm gonna put this into a folder here. Yay for folders. So I'm gonna hide this one. So this is very simple here. This is my six act structure. This is my six beats that I have to hit. So the location is a graveyard. That's very simple graveyard. Um, let's go with very normal something, you know, you have a, a, you have a church there actually with a, with a cross on top, for example, it's a, it's a Western church, for example. And there are trees indeed, they're always nice trees. And then they're like gravestones. Some of the gravestones again have a shape on top. Some other gravestones are in the foreground. So this is very, very simple. Uh, I don't have dialogue, but I leave some room here. I put a moon there because it's night. I put in some clouds to make it eerie and spooky. Key. And then I'm going to think about, okay, what is the, the depths of this, right? Where does the light source come from? And what am I actually going to see? And I'm going to group everything, make, make dark elements, make medium light elements, make very light elements. They're just like uh, colored in basically like the sky is going to be not black. It's going to be dark, dark blue. Um, so the, the, the church is still going to come out. There's going to be detail in the middle ground and very, very little detail in the foreground. So I'm basically looking between two gravestones now, which is an interesting way of framing this. Normally, you should be careful about placing stuff in the corners. Like, don't do this like children, like draw the sun in the corner. We don't do that now. And then there's a, a little bit of a tree coming out here and I have an idea for the fern here, right? And then I place my character here because he's coming into the scene. This is like the worst composition ever. Don't do it like I just did it. That's not what we want to do. Avoid the corners if you can. Don't make stuff interact with the uh, with the panel frame and the, uh, the contour of the panel border. So this is the first one, and this is a very, very flexible frame. I can easily go like, you know what? We're just gonna take this one and make it a horizontal panel. No problem at all. Um, but let's go to the second one. Spider-Man arrives in the center of location. Is this my money shot? Hmm. I think the coolest shot is probably uh, when, when Spider-Man is like shooting the webbing at the bed. That might not have to be the biggest one. Maybe I really want to make the vampire appearing um, and attacking with the bats, I want to make this the money shot. So I probably will go with a huge panel on that one. That sounds cool. Yeah, I think so. Spider-Man arrives at the center of location. So how does Spider-Man arrive? He doesn't take the subway. He jumps into frame. He's super dynamic. So, um, so this is cool. So I could have Spider-Man, for example, I could, I could actually, um, do a frame where I, I, I use the church steeple again and have the, the roof come in here. And then I have Spider-Man uh, like, like really cool jumping in, into frame, really dynamically jumping, uh, jumping forward and using the, the church steeple uh, as, uh, as a webbing thing, right? So I have Spider-Man here and I'm gonna do him super fast because this is the first breakdown. I'm gonna improve it in the next phase. Um, 
I still have 45 minutes. So that's ample time to draw a comic book page, right? So I have Spider-Man arriving here. That's really cool. He's, he's, he's jumping into action. Um, yeah, that's nice. And I have the moon in the background still. Uh, got to see maybe from this angle, the moon is actually down here or not visible. Got to be careful with that um, moon. So I might not want to place the moon actually here. But this is this is okay. This is fine. And the hero finds the location deserted. So I have to show Spider-Man being there alone. There's nothing there. So I could I could do Spider-Man um, actually just, just showing... I don't have to show him completely, right? What I want to do is I want to create a space that it has a lot of emptiness in there. So I have a lot of like tombstones and they become smaller in the distance and there might be rows of tombstones and they just there's peter out to the end and become become smaller and there's some some trees that's a huge graveyard, right? I want to place him in there. I could I could actually just show Spider-Man standing here there as a full body shot. Um, but I might not need this. I have a full body shot of him there. And we've seen yesterday how it is when you have like three panels and the character is always the same size. It much more looks like an instructional uh, drawing from like an Ikea catalog or something like that than actually a comic book. That is really cool. So what I would do here is a frame that is a bit more low angle so I don't have to draw all those things. But I might just draw Spider-Man's hip and might draw his arm there and he's like wait a second i'm alone like this this is quite something so i have spider-man here with the spider thing on the web so we see him from behind right so we've changed perspective from behind this makes it interesting this has us wondering okay spider-man is here definitely he's on the ground now we have established the transition from this shot to this shot that he is on the ground um and we put in we put in uh, all the all the gravestones like these gravestones would now be visible here probably Okay, okay, he's alone. There's nothing happening. But then he hears something, and we have Spider-Man turn around. So very simple, uh, Spider-Man turning around. He turns towards us, and uh, put his shoulder in here, and his Spider-Man Spider Sense tingles. What? Damn it! And you see that that this is nice, and I can I can draw in a little arrow. No, we do this for storyboarding only. I can do like put in this here, but I don't have to actually because we put in the turn already. I, the character turns around with his head first. And then the shoulder follows, right? I can't do this and I can't do that at the same time. It's not possible because we're not storyboarding. If you storyboard and do an animatic, this could happen. First this one and then have that one. But if we do both at the same time, it's working for a comic book and it's it's nicely illustrating this point. the point. Andrina and asked have... a question earlier that kind of pertains to this, which is do you take photos of yourself in different poses to serve as reference when the pose is a bit odd? Very rarely, but I have done it. I have done it. There was a scene I shot for a triple A video game. It's not yet out, so I can't talk about it. But there was a there was a, a person that was holding a spear towards the camera and like threatening us in an ego perspective with it. And uh yes, I took took a picture of myself um with my with my camera, put it down on the floor, uh took a broom. And the broomstick was my spear. And then I had all the, the, the foreshortening and the hand positions and the position of me dynamically and naturally standing like this. I had it all figured out. It took me two minutes and then I could trace it or just like draw over it or be inspired by it. And it took me another few minutes to draw it. Constructing this really hard. So today you have a camera on your cell phone, please use it. You have a camera on your computer, please use it for reference. There's no reason why you can't draw a hand because you can just reference your own hand. It's super easy. Um, and that brings me to back to the Spider-Man here. We don't have a hand yet. Check it out. We want to draw in the hand. And he's like, what? Opening the fingers. He's not doing a fist. Spider-Man's like, I'm so surprised. No, this is surprised. So you open up the fingers and draw a hand. I scribbled it in really fast in here. So that's panel four already. Panel five, the vampire attacking the hero in this way. So we need the vampire character. Um, let's put him in here and uh, one leg front and he's like, he's like, he's like jumping. Uh, let's do the other leg, for example. It doesn't matter right now uh, what it is actually. But he has one hand stretched out towards the camera, which is really cool looking. And the other one is going back. And maybe he even has a, maybe he even has a cape. I think Morbius has a cape and Graf, uh, Count Dracula also has it, has a cape and yeah, wasn't Dracula in Marvel Comics too? He was, yeah. 
Awesome. So the bats come like, these are the bats. I'm going to draw them more like, like birds because I don't have time to do this, right? So I'm going to draw like bats in here and they're attacking our hero. And they are basically coming and forming a line. So they are forming a line like this, getting bigger. So this is something that he attacks us with. So there's, it's weird, right? There, there's a lot of dead space here. The word balloon probably wouldn't be down here. This is kind of boring perspective. So I have to look this more exciting, but I might actually want to make this into a big page width panel. So we have more opportunity then to see the length of it, right? Because we don't need his legs necessarily, but we need to have the bats come from his, from his arm because he commands them to attack. Uh, so that's one panel. And then we have Spider-Man twip, uh, thwip, um, <laughs> shooting out his web. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a simple panel too. So we go back to Spider-Man and Spider-Man might do it with, uh, with both hands, basically. It's the official comic term, the official moral term, thwipping. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, it is. Stan Lee made it up. Excelsior. <laughs> Um, so, so this is, this is, this is great. So he's, he, he's doing the thing, he's doing that. Um, and I'm going to draw really fast in here and he's shooting the webbing and we have, we have some webbing here. So this goes, webbing goes forward and, um, and the bats are like caught inside it, right? Bats are not really big, but they are a lot. So that's dangerous. So I'm already seeing that I'm running into a little problem here because the, where the bats are and where Spider-Man is, the areas overlap. And whenever I show things behind each other and hide them, it becomes less readable. For example, my arm, my fist, I can extend it to the camera, but now you can only see my fist. My arm is completely gone. So that's not good. So I have to stretch it out. Now my arm is just a tube. You can still barely see it. But if I do this, all of a sudden, my arm becomes fully readable because you can see all parts of my body. This is much more interesting to see. It gives a better read. So maybe I actually have to do a horizontal panel here as well. And now I have all the info that I need basically for my page. The rest is icing on the cake. Let's see. I'm not going to make it pretty, but I'm trying to make it efficient. So I'm going away from the six grid like this. And I know I want, um, I'm going to paint myself into a corner now or into a box, uh, quite literally. So I know that I have this entire page, but I need to keep the main action happening in the life area. Never forget that, that we have this life area and we want to respect that because all dialogue will go in there and all the elements that tell the story go in there. I cannot cut off. Uh, something that is really important, like his hands, for example, or the bats flying out, or or like uh, his butt cheek here. We want to have that Spider-Man butt cheek in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have some Spider-Man butt. While yeah. you're while you're uh, fixing this page, are you good to take questions? Because there's a couple of questions in the chat, or would you rather wait until you've had an opportunity to work this page out a little bit more? Uh, yeah, let's just let's uh, let's get into uh, um, the questions in one second. Okay. Maybe you can collect something and fi find a theme in the questions um, that is that is of interest. Yeah, so no I know I, I know I have like six panels here, and I know the big one. So this is going to be a smaller one. Um, maybe you're going to put this down here. This is the lower section of it, and then I'm going to do a big shot for my uh, my 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 villain attacking, and that already leaves me with only half a page for four panels. The good thing is that this establishing shot, as I said, is super easy to put in there. So I can really make this a tiny panel. I can actually make a lot of that happen outside the life area because uh, the main shapes are really easy to, to take in there. So um, let's see, panel, panel four is Spider-Man turning around. So this is panel five here, uh, this is six. So panel four is Spider-Man turning around. I can make this a tiny panel as well. So I can just go in here and, and make this a page width panel, make it dramatic, but I just need his head, his head, his shoulder and the hand or like the tips of the fingers. And the viewer will put everything together and interpret um, the picture correctly because the picture continues outside the box. So now I have three more to, to put in there. Um, so the first one is the establishing shot. I could actually do the establishing shot and the hero arriving in the location in one panel. That would be a deviation, but I would, I would get by with that. So shall we do this? I don't know. 
Let's find out. Let's see. So theoretically, I could make this a really a small panel. Just use this. Basically, this space is important, and we can use the, the air here and put a moon up here or something like that. Then uh, Spider-Man arrives, which is kind of like a cool thing, but we also have to show him that he's in an empty space. So that is important as well for me. Um, so let's think about that. This is like getting a little bit tight. Maybe I just wanna, I wanna take this down a couple notches and um, just make give give us a little bit more room up here to establish that thing and make make the other panels a little bit smaller. So we just so we have more room. So this is already giving me a bit more more headspace up here. So second one is Spider Man arriving, and uh, let's see how what we do there. And then we can show that Spider-Man is alone. And he's, um... what I can actually do now is I can, I can squeeze out a couple more millimeters of space by actually making this third panel be, um, not actually have a border like this. I can have this space and this, this space if I just block it out differently like this, boom. And uh, actually, I don't need this there. See how this panel has just grown a little bit in size? Oh, that's why they do the, that sometimes. <laughs> tiny, tiny tricks to in order to, to make this happen. So the second one, uh, I can now go uh, to, uh, to a lower, oopsie. Yeah, I'm here. I can now copy out the, um, the frame. So we have Spider-Man arriving here with that thing. Control C, Control V puts it in and we already have it in darker. So that is nice. That is the second shot we're doing. So we focus on Spider-Man here. We don't focus on um, on basically what's happening. So I, 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 might, I might not use the steeple at all or just like put a little bit of in there and just squeeze it to, together a little bit more. And then I'm gonna cut off that here. This is going to be my Spider-Man. We see the webbing is going outside the panel and the steeple is going outside the panel. And I'm just going to draw the steeple here and it will connect. We will think like, oh yeah, that's how Spider-Man is jumping into the scene. That's great. Um, then I have panel two where Spider-Man is arriving. We remember it still. This is the middle panel. This is like middle tier. This is the panel where he's arriving. Yeah, that's kind of good. It's very space uh, efficient. So let's use this one, control C and throw it in here. Control V. Boom, have it in here. And it works. We just need a little bit, um, can just like elongate this a little bit and see how we how we do for space there. Now I'm seeing like, well, maybe there's too much of the butt cheek. Like what's going on at this? I, I wanna see more space of the, uh, of the rows of um, gravestones. So I might want to go with a Dutch angle because we just learned if we do a Dutch angle, the horizontal line is longer. And this is exactly what I can do. I can actually get the arm in here and just do a Dutch angle to show it's weird. Something is fishy about this. So this is panel three, like he's arriving. Maybe he's waiting for somebody, but maybe Spider-Man is waiting for somebody different. So he's, he's not, he's waiting for somebody else to, or maybe he actually wants to see the gravestone or something like that. We, we don't know. So Spider-Man has arrived here. Um, that's, that's, that's cool. And I can also make him look a little bit more dynamic as if he was like just landed, for example. Let's see if I remember this, but let's go through the, the panels first and just establish everything. We have Spider-Man next turning around. Let's go with that. So I go in as, as fast, as close and as possible. I have his shoulder here. I have his face here. This is the center line of his face. I'm just gonna, gonna use his face mask. It's very easy to draw, basically. It's his ear is gonna be here somewhere and the neck is gonna be there. So there's that thing happening. That's cool. And um, yeah, Spider-Man, uh, that's his shoulder. That's cool. And then we have put his hand in here like, oh, what? And I'm gonna draw the entire hand now. So I'm gonna draw the entire hand, opening it up. And I'm not gonna put the entire hand in the picture because we don't need the entire hand in the picture. You can just go like, what? Excuse me. Right, and this is the fourth one. And that's actually not in the picture. I can cut this off. And if I'm like, wait, this doesn't read enough. I can just 
control T and just put it in a bit more, maybe make it bigger. Like what? Um, but also I don't like the shape of this hand. So I think this finger should be like more, more curved like this. This needs to be shorter. It's really the worst hand I've ever drawn, but it works. It's more exciting now. I should actually open up the, the thumb a little bit more and um, redraw this hand, my goodness. I think what you're demonstrating now um, uh, touches upon a question that Mohammed asked, um, which is uh, how do you distribute the character, the body, the head, et cetera, dimension proportions into the workspace of your art? And that's what you're doing right now. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So if there's a work balloon, you would not put it over the hand. That's not good, right? So you have to make sure that there's no work balloon here, that he doesn't go like, I, I think I will just, what? You know, so there's, there's a sequence to this. I think I will just, is not him turning around. What? He's turning around on what? So there is a work balloon and he goes like, I think I will just, what? So this doesn't work. If we place it here, that doesn't really work. Uh, it would work if we place it here and have it actually transition. This is the moment where we can place the work balloon in order strategically breaking the tear that I told you yesterday not to do in order to communicate the sequence. So there's a million ways comics can actually help you. You, you paint yourself into a corner and you go like, shit, this is not working. Now it's working all of a sudden. So this is a good one. We have the, you have the spider sense tingling here. Boom, spider sense going off here. That's the good one. And then put the webbing up here and uh, just put that on his shoulder. Doesn't he have webbing on his shoulder? I think so, right? Yeah. He hasn't drawn it in a while. Um, so put this in here. Um, but this is something for later. This is something for, it's not important for us for storytelling right now because we're just doing the basic storytelling. Um, let's go to the next panel. Next panel is gonna be our splash panel where uh, the, the vampire villain is attacking him. Yeah, money shot money shot this is this is the money shot because it sells the book because somebody flips through and goes like whoa that's cool vampire attacking with bats wow i've never seen that before um so i will go in as close as possible as far away as necessary and there there's something where i'm like okay you know what i can actually have border breaking happening here this is possible to do this because this is basically happening at the same time and i'm just border breaking um, in a way that is, that is not, not um, fighting against any sequence of, of, of uh, viewing the pictures, of looking at the pictures. And I'm able now to actually make this, take, take the bat out here, um, have him bought a break with a cape, for example, and have the biggest bats in the front and the smaller ones further away and just, just put him in there. And we're, we're actually much closer now than we were before. If we compare these shots, right? He's, he's just gotten a bit bigger and that's really cool. And then we, we have him like coming out of a tree line or something like that, some background here from trees or whatever it is, some more gray stones. And, uh, and then it looks, it looks exciting. I might wanna cut him off here, but I just need to be careful not to cut him off at the limb, at the knee or at the, at the elbow or at the wrist, we don't do that. Um, so I'll have to do this when I do my sketch over this and I'm gonna wrap this up soon. And then I have 30 minutes to just sketch over this and just make it look a little bit better. So it's presentable to an editor and it's clean and it's, and it's readable. And the editor who sees that goes like, yes, I understand the story. I understand the sequence. Whew. Um, you got this, you can do it. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 working. It's working. So this is cool. I'm gonna flatten this down into one one layer. That's cool. So it's easy to to show it. And now we have this shot. There's not a lot. Of, this is my life area. So if there's dialogue, it's gonna be in here. Um, and there's a lot of extra space at the bottom though. So that's why I can use this space. Um, and even if if I if I uh, mismatch uh, the dimensions by a little bit, it doesn't matter. In this stage. I can still, I could, I could simply go in there and, and, you know, push it together a little bit and then I have more space and it will still work out because it still reads. And I can always adjust the anatomy and the posing a little bit to make it fit better. As you can see, there's a lot of creative juice going on here. There's a lot of back and forth. There are a lot of arguments that I make with myself. Like, can I do this? Should I do this? Is this good enough? Does this hand read? 
Is the lighting okay? A million choices uh, that we comic book artists do here. And um, yeah, it's, it's not simple. This is not simple. Yeah, making comics is very difficult. There's a lot of disciplines all at once. It's like so many. Yeah, so I have Spider-Man here um, in the bottom of the frame. And I've already made this compositional sketch and I realized that it, it doesn't really work um, because Spider-Man and the bats are like too close together. That's what I mentioned there a few minutes ago. So now since I have a horizontal panel, like, you know what? I can actually do this. I can I can put Spider-Man down here with his, uh, with his hands, with his jazz hands. I'm gonna put the face and the hands into the life area. Everything beyond that is icing on the cake. And I can put the bats that he's like entrapping in his in his spider web. I can put them here. And I can make them really big. And I can make his webbing fly out here. And maybe I will actually take this hand and, and move it down a little bit. So it's more in front of his body. And this this hand is actually this hand is actually a bit more here. Just shoots shoots also shoots webs, so he basically creates webbing like this, like there's a W shape in there, right? So he just, this is the webbing, this is the webbing, and this is how he does it. That's cool. We have his arm here, we got the shoulder here, and we got the anatomy here. Maybe he's even jumping. Oh, look at this, how, di how di diagonally I posed him here. Again, great idea, Klaus. Uh, I'm so good. Uh, yeah, just put him in here and, and have, him, have him jump because it's, it's freaking Spider-Man, he's jumping a lot. So yeah, here we have him. And then I can put, put like speed lines in the back and then it's gonna look awesome. So this, this is shaping up nicely. I just need the establishing shot, which is the easiest one in this entire, in this entire operation. I'm just gonna go um, cut out the, um, the page below. I add it here, I'm gonna cut it out, Control C and just gonna throw uh, activate this again and hide this again and then that goes in the same location boom here we go and then i just have to find a good what is good what 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 part do we really need oh yeah we need the steeple which should still be in the life area we need the knight and we need a um a gravestone right so i'm just you know what i'm doing i'm just gonna put this together just gonna put it here. So the, the church is normally on a little hill. That's it's nicely how, how they're done because you can see it from afar then. Um, and uh, so the, the gravestones are all like lining up here in front of it. So, and then we have a nice little lineup of gravestones here as well. So this is the really easy way of, of telling that story of where we are. And basically now all the creative part is done. This page works. Um, this is a full page and now I can go in and plus it, make it more readable and make it a little bit nicer for the editor to see. This one can already be lettered. There can be pre-lettering on this. So a lettering artist can go in and go like, you know, there's, there's work balloons here, but there I have like six work balloons in this panel where he sees them because he has a lot of thought about like, who is that person? Whatever, he hears the sound, uh, can be a million things and we need more space in that one and this is not working out. But I should have done my homework as I said today, leave a lot of room for the word balloons if there are any, but this is a silent issue. Like the G.I. Joe silent issue with Snake Eyes, uh, the legendary one from, uh, from the Real American Hero uh, line of comics back from Marvel back in the day. Oh, how no convenient. Dialogue. Yes. You don't have to pay attention to bubbles in this one. <laughs> exactly. It's very convenient. Um, and uh, I'm very happy that I wrote this uh, very, very simple, uh, very simple script. And look how far we came. We came from just just fill in the blanks to the rudimentary sketches that you made or earlier to this in no time. And the amount of uh, problem solving on the fly that you have to do as a comic book artist is uh, it's incredible. Yeah, there's 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 a lot. I'm gonna put this into a folder here because I might need the uh, the balloons. So I'm gonna, just gonna uh, reduce the opacity now of this. I don't know, can you still see it now a little bit? A little bit, yeah. How's the resolution? Very, very good. So I will just, um, I will not actually, I will, I want the resolution of this one to read a little bit better. So I just want that. Um, let me see, I don't want to get distracted too much by it. And now we're going to see how fast I can, I can, I can crank this out. Let's see. So we need a church steeple. 
going like this, right? And it has a little thing on top. And the church steeple is normally made with like, what do you call that? Um, German word for that, Schindel. Um, tiles? You have tiles, yes, thank you. There are these tiles that give the, it, like it's an iconic shape, right? It's a little bit like jagged, the edge, right? So um, this part is dark because the light is coming from the right. The moon is shining against trees and it's reflecting on this thing. So this is happening here. And then there's a, an entrance to this to this church. I'm not going to overtly detail this. Um, and it's going to branch out here a little bit. And we're going to put like a, a signature on top. Something is up there. A uh, shape that is round and cross-shaped and something. So this is going to go in here. So this is already like getting, getting to the word. So it's a small church. So there's a door down here. And there's maybe a window next to it, another window next to it. Maybe there's a light on. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there are some additional crosses here, something like that. Uh, we don't know. And then there's um, indeed wall, right? But I don't want to overdo the detail on that stuff. Just want to keep it really simple. I'm going to put another gravestone, like a part of a gravestone, um, um, in the foreground here and make that really simple. Let me see how dark I am. Am I at full power? Um, this is reading as dark gray. Why is that? Huh. Um, I'm a hundred percent. It's weird. I think this should be darker. Um, still, let me see this. Oh, it works. Um, and going to put a gravestone in here and this gravestone, I'm going to make full black, solid black, fill it in. What, what a comic book artist normally does there. He just scribbles that in and then he puts an X in there. So if they put an X in there, it, it alerts the inker to make this a black area. So just put an X in there and then, then you're good. I could do a little light reflection to give it some more three dimensionality and then break it up with a couple lines to show like, okay, this is stone. I can even break up the structure here a little bit. So we'll go like, oh, this is an old graveyard, for example. So I'm already like spitballing here with myself, right? And thinking about like, okay, if that's an old graveyard, maybe the other graveyards are also like overgrown uh, with with um, something, right? So I can put in some some leaves here, for example. This is kind of good. Okay, this is cool. Some, some leaves are growing over that thing. So I'm gonna put this here. And then when I ink it, I would use some white out to, to scribble some names in here that are not readable. What we don't want again, like yesterday, we don't want to put a name in here, right? You don't want to put that because that will distract us from, from what's going on here. Um, we have some, some uh, gravestones here. Maybe there's another little mini altar or something like that. It's a bit a sign of interest, you know, to break up the monotony of the stones here. But in the foreground, we just want to go with this monotony of stones because that is that is how we communicate that this place is empty and um, it's not much going on. So I'm going to put a moon in here. I'm going to put it up there. Put, it, put up really high. Just put a little details here on the side. I'm not going to put all the, the, um, the surface of the moon. I'm just going to allude to it a little bit. And leave it out so it, it reads as a, as a rounder shape if i leave some emptiness here as well so these are the um these are the there's a little way here a little pass for example and then there's a lot of gravestones i'm doing some overlap here overlapping careful here with the tangency like this could be a tangent that's not good we we need to avoid this like the devil so so make sure that this doesn't happen i can indeed do this and still break it down here, just putting another gravestone here. Boom, done. But also let's separate the areas nicely from each other. One is darker, one is a little bit lighter. Here might be another window on the side of this, of this chapel. So this is happening here. It's really dark. And I'm putting in those things. And I can put in some grass here as well. It's grass. And there's a lot of time, like this is a deserted graveyard, really spooky, uh, makes it really interesting. And I can actually do this as well. And now I have an interesting, interesting shapes here that go that lead the eye towards, um, toward what's, what's going on here. This might be really dark. And then there's the pathway that might be a little bit more light. And then I'm going to start rendering grass, for example, but not too much. Keep it light. We can add more detail with the coloring later on um, and add more, 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 uh, more value. And this we should really have dark, but not too dark. 
So we have three values in reading here. We have the first value, the really dark one in the front, and then we have the medium in the background, uh, in the middle ground, sorry. And then we have like some trees here, normal trees. And I'm just gonna do them at an, as an outline. So, um, so the colorist has something to do. <laughs> Give that guy some work. <laughs> that person some work yeah absolutely and then we're going to put in some clouds clouds are always nice and we can make them dramatic and round and lead the eye into the picture right so make them really cool clouds here i can even put in some bats if i wanted to Ooh, but, um so that that that's a possibility so we have establishing established the the graveyard now here's super easy right like this is we don't need a lot to establish a location and now we have Spider-Man coming in. I have 15 more minutes. Oh my God. Okay, let's see how far I get this. If I don't finish it up today, I'll finish it up in the afternoon. I'm gonna show you the result tomorrow in the next masterclass. Oh, great. There's a reason to come back then. Absolutely. So this is Spider-Man. So let's let's zoom in here a little bit. Spider-Man, uh, as you can see, I don't draw the head and then I draw the body underneath it. Uh, I draw the head first and the body is actually behind it basically. And he's, he's putting his one arm down because he uses that arm to, to actually to actually swing. And um, boom, this swings out of frame. Okay, this is not dynamic for, oh, this is a good stroke. I can hit, um, I can also click here, hit shift, and then hit this, and then it will create a line with my drawing between that. So that's kind of cool. So this is, this is his line work here. And the other arm goes back, this one goes to the front, so the other one goes to the back. This is deltoid, this upper arm. And this slow arm, and uh, I will open up the hands because he's super dynamic here. Spider-Man not always fists like Superman. Much more inclined to open fingers because he needs to cling to walls and uh, have all the fun with the wall crawling action. A lot of the a lot of the decisions that you're making are kind of based on a mental library that you have of things you can pull from, like oh you can the texture of the stone to make it look older and things like that. Uh, Albors asks, do you often use photos to inspire yourself? Um, it's Well, yeah, sure. I need to look at photos. I love looking at, at films and video and all that stuff and, and the real world outside. So it, com it comes from everywhere. And sometimes you don't know where it comes from anywhere. Sometimes it actually comes from other comic books. There are things like I, I, uh, I love the comic book series in Germany called Clever and Smart or Mortadello y Filemon. Uh, it's a Spanish one, and it's about two secret agents. And um, the artist who, who wrote it, uh, who drew it and wrote it, um, always uh, drew streets, and he always drew cigarette butts on the ground and little cobwebs in the corners. Um, and I, I just copied that, and just to this day, I'm still doing this. And you might always see a leaf flying around through pictures that, I, that I've drawn. And, and that's the Klaus Schawinski leaf. Like I put a leaf in there because I want to show nature. I want to show interaction. And sometimes you want to break up a line. Um, there is a strong line in the picture to break it up. A leaf flying through or a sheet of paper in the city to show, hey, look how dirty this is. Um, that's, that's, when it gets, that's when it gets interesting. So we can do this here and have Spider-Man jump in here. Do I like this? No, I don't like this enough. I was just gonna redraw this because we got time, right? <laughs> All the time so in the world. I'll raise the leg up here, right? So he's, 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 look, he's coming in a little bit differently. So this is maybe something that I, that I like more. Now it looks like he's scared, also don't like this. So uh, let's look at the original sketch. Yeah, ah, that was a really cool one. What I did here uh, was I was actually drawing his back. So we'd see his butt here, and we see less of his chest, and then we'd have him actually have his, his thigh here and his knee, and he's, he's and he's coming in like here, like this. And now it looks a little bit more dynamic. Still not really super happy with this. So um, I, I might have to go back and and uh, and change this this posing because doing getting Spider-Man right is really important. Ah, that's a nice one. What about that one? So yeah, having the leg here, having the chest area here, this now works. Just got to connect the hips better. We don't make it too broad. Um, and uh, I think then we're, then we're good. Connect this a little bit better. Have it go back. And yeah, so his head is going forward, his arm is going forward, and the legs are still back. That's cool. I'm not 
having the foot touch the border of the panel. That would be a tangent, that would be bad. And here in the foreground, I can just put in the tiles or um, the, the roofing, the structure, and just reuse the shape I've had before and just put it super strong in the foreground and not render it out actually. Because we're focusing on Spider-Man arriving. Spider-Man has come. That's a good shot. So he's arriving like, hey, what's going on? He's ready for action. And then there's nobody there. So next shot, um, I'm gonna like uh, pose him a little bit differently because this is a very upright position. We can see this. So I think it would be nicer if if he was like surprised a little bit more, right? And and I, I move out his arm. I actually, I might actually show his his head here. I'm not sure about this. This might cut off. A lot of that will cut off, but a lot of that will still read. So I will put his belt line here and put his butt here and have his, his leg come in a little bit more. So he's a little bit more dynamic because we wanna we wanna maximize the dynamicism of Spider-Man because he's he's Spider-Man, right? Um, and I might want to take this arm back because I want to have a huge open dead space there. That is not interesting. And I'm going to lift up his arm, his elbow a little bit right now. So he's a bit more surprised. Like, what? Wait a second. Why is nothing happening here? Drawing hands, always important. He's got an open hand here. So yeah, this is, this is more interesting. Like, actually, this could be his face. This could be his mask. It could be in the front there. So I have to think... Uh, about the character being extended outside. This is his, his back spider. It looks a little bit different than the front spider. And uh, I'm gonna put the elbow in here. It's the elbow. And then there's uh, the line coming down to intersect with his thing. And uh, yeah, this is, this is Spider-Man. It's, it's, it's getting there. And I'm gonna make a heavy shadow here. Regarding this the safe one. zone, uh, Nathan wanted some clarification. Uh, this safe zone, is that what you're sure won't be cut off by the printer? Because you're drawing outside of the safe zone now. Uh, no, uh, the, 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 this, is the, this is the trim line. This is where the printer will cut it off. The safe zone is just to make sure that the artwork and the word balloons have room to breathe. When you, when you see a lettering artist that puts a lettering like a word balloon that goes outside, the trim line is cut off. And I've seen this in productions and there's even writing in here, then the writing is cut off and barely visible. That's a complete failure. Something has gone wrong there or somebody has been very unprofessional in putting this together. This should not be happening. So keep everything nice. All the reading elements, put them into the safe zone. I can do this now. I can, I can cut it off. Give me a second. Let's see what it looks like. Um, no, it doesn't work like this. So let's let's cut them off. Let's so let me see. Safe safe area here. Oh, it's still Spider-Man. Hmm. Still reads even even with that, and he's only cut off here at the head. So that doesn't doesn't really matter. And even even the safe zone here, right? Like this this area of the of the establishing shot. This still reads even if I cut this off, which will never be cut off, but the steeple still reads. It would intersect with a corner of the panel there. That would be bad. But again, this will not happen because it's only cut off here at the trim line. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show a lot of empty space. So I might have this path here with some grass uh, being there, and I'm going going to use this one. And he's looking down at the um, at the gravestones, and they're in a neat row. Creates a lot of depth here, right? And there's um, there's even more gravestones in the background there. And here there are a couple of non-gravestones. Remember the light from the moon that casts a shadow of those things? So those still cast a shadow. Actually, he should be backlit, not, not lit from the side, but that's uh, he might be actually standing here looking in this direction. So this might actually work. In comic books, you can do a lot of things though that you don't have that you that you that you get away with in comic books while in storyboarding you can't you have to be really aware of where your character is exactly from which side he's lit otherwise it will not read anymore okay now i'm gonna put all the the, the things in here all the all the all the gravestones i put them even in the back basically on the horizon um and i'm just gonna do a tree line that is very very simple just no detail just different trees and make them make them look erratic and, and different. Give them a little bit of value here. 
and that's it. It's, it's empty. I'm not going to fill this with a bazillion details and render out the trees and all that stuff. I want to show this is empty, like there's nothing happening there. I have five more minutes. I'm not going to finish this page. This is going to be exciting for tomorrow, but I think I can do one more panel. All right. But maybe there's also a question in the chat towards this process, because I'm showing the process. This is not about me finishing this art. This is about me explaining the process. There are some uh, technical questions. Uh, Mohammed asked uh, several questions, one of which is, how do you implement vanishing points as a reference center point on your workspace for your artwork project? Oh, um, yeah. If, if I did a, a vanishing point here, I would, I would just do a new layer, do this. And I would, I would, I mean, like, this is my vanishing point, right? This is very, very simple. And I would draw it myself. I mean, ideally, you would have actually a grid that you copy paste it or use a function in your, in your, in your computer program um, to, to do this. Wait a second, here. Um, and, and so, so this, is, this is my vanishing point. So this is, this is good enough for that. And then I can just tilt this, control T, move it outside the area. I can just tilt this in here. And then I would move it where it should go. And in this case, actually, it would move outside my picture or on the edge of the picture. What I don't want is necessarily a vanishing point that goes in the middle of a picture. I only do this when I have an iconic shot where somebody's like coming down a corridor and I want to show Tony Stark walking towards his business meeting and looking epic with a lot of room. Then I will do these converging lines, converging on him. If that is not the case, um, Vanishing points should be, especially if there are two vanishing points or three, they should always be outside your panel. Think much bigger than the constraints of the panel box, please. In the case of that panel three there, um, that grid that you're holding up is actually pretty close to the drawing you did. So you mentally imagined the perspective and drew because you, you're so experienced drawing, you don't have to put the grid down, yes. but you did think about that as well Absolutely. as the 5 million things you're thinking of as you're trying to draw the comic. Yeah, you can see how the, how the, how the, um, the, um, how the, um, the gravestones here get smaller, right? And, and they all follow this, this perspective line that I've just coincidentally drawn correctly. So uh, yeah, that's one of my skills. Everybody has different skills. You might be better at color. You might be better at making your characters look cute. Um, you might be better at, uh, at having a really tight, neat outline that you need for animation, for example, right? You work in animation, Molly, so you have a really good hand. You don't need the smoothing function from Photoshop. You can just do it, you know, as you like. For me, this is all diff uh, difficult, but what's easy for me is perspective, blocking, characters moving, and telling a story with pictures came naturally for me, but I also have a lot of experience. I've drawn a couple hundred pages of comic books um, and I've drawn basically 100 pages before I actually started with, with G.I. Joe. So um, that was really good. I heard uh, somebody say, an art instructor said like, after like drawing 100 comic book pages, then you're closing in on nailing it down and knowing what you're doing on the page. Before that, that's exploration. So please start drawing today, get those pages out of your system. Um, and, and then you get closer to that and then it will be as simple as, as I'm doing it here. And as you can see, I'm one hour in and I'm still just creating uh, this, this sketch down. So I will have to, tie, have to take some time off screen and finish this page. And tomorrow we'll see if I succeeded, but I'm not gonna take it further than this because those are breakdowns and they're very instructional. After that, it's only the icing on the cake. It's just rendering, it's color, it's knowledge of anatomy, knowledge of drapery, and how to make it better. This is the essence of storytelling and pictures for American comic books. Fantastic. And are you going to post um, this page on your Instagram when it's ready? Oh, absolutely. It's so good that you bring this up. Totally forgot about this. Yes, I will post it there. Yeah, for those who don't know, Klaus posts some very interesting things on his Instagram. He posts a lot of process and a lot of his thinking and um, occasionally occasionally things when he's speaking and stuff like that. I'll just pop your handle in the chat. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. Klaus. Uh, the people can still, still see my um, uh, my monitor. So I got my, my Instagram open here and I just posted about this one here. And I'm going to show, uh, this is the, the repost, uh, the recap from day one, if you missed out on that. And there's even a trailer in there that we did back in the day for the comic book. That's really cool. So you can check it out on my uh, Instagram at Storyboard Klaus. Very easy to memorize. And I'm, I'm going to guide you through the script. 
And uh, if you want your comic page critiqued tomorrow, tomorrow on the air by me, if I'm supposed to look over it, just ping me. Just uh, just send me a private message on Instagram at Storyboard Klaus, and you can link me to your Instagram or uh, send me the picture of the page you would like me to discuss. And uh, yeah, I, I might want to discuss it. I don't know if I have time. I already have one or two things that I want to I want to uh, get into tomorrow. Um, but I might have uh, I might have some time to discuss and to analyze your page. And I'm only choosing pages that are that are okay, right? Um, I'm not super beginners. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to change your style. I don't want to uh, um, uh, uh, deprive you of the of the process of discovery. So if you have a page that kind of works, kind of is okay, um, that's great. Show it to me and I might be able to plus it to make it better and read more. And then you can take it to the next level yourself because I'm not going to finish your page. I'm not going to draw in your style really. You finish in your style. I'm not critiquing style. So if it's manga or if it's, uh, if it's any other style, it doesn't matter. But it needs to be an American uh, comic book storytelling thing because that's where I'm good at and I should stay in my avenue, I think. Wonderful. That's a great opportunity. So yeah, everybody, everybody listening, this is a real chance that you have there. If you head over to Klaus's Instagram and send him your comic book pages, that's wonderful. Uh, so Klaus, um, we've reached the end of the session. Um, do you have any final words? Um, I have final words. Uh, keep drawing, get those 100 pages out of your system. Um, and yeah, join us tomorrow again. Uh, we might have more books that we recommend um, and we'll talk uh, about, yeah, some more about panel setup. I'm gonna show you the page, how it's finished, like the finished breakdowns tomorrow. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up uh, with a really nice session again tomorrow. So I love talking about comics and panels. Uh, so yeah, join us again tomorrow. That's all I can say. Wonderful. Yes, everybody, the, this was uh, session two. Tomorrow is the final session and it's going to be wonderful. Hope everybody, thank you everybody in the chat for contributing. It was really fun seeing everybody coming up with ideas for the page and collaborating. So make sure you check out what we all accomplish together uh, tomorrow, same time, same place on Adobe Live. Thank you very much. Bye everybody. Thank you.